there we go. <laughs> oh, good morning, folks. I did something I didn't want to do. I took a um, StreamYard has this built in music, and I removed one by accident. Um, I don't know how to add it back. There it is. Ah, oh, yes. Add. I wonder if I can scoot it up. In, oh, I can. I can click and drag and scoot it up to the top. Yay! Ha! Ah, figured out something new today. Alrighty then. Now let me hide these things and get the comments here on StreamYard. I do have a recording going on uh, with Rumble. I don't know if it's live or not. I want it to be live, but I have no idea if it's recording live or it's just recording. I'll find out. I I could go out and come back in, I guess, but I don't want to do that. So we will uh, we'll just leave it at that and uh, see what happens after we're done. I can remove that now. And let me key in here. Good morning, everyone. Please say hey. And hopefully that will get posted to all of the important places. Because I fight with StreamYard and I shouldn't. I uh, I, uh, let's see, am I there? Do, 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 I don't see me. I've been trying to stream, I can stream my church service. Um, I want to go to my profile page. I can stream this church service through StreamYard. I could do that. But I can't add the church's Facebook account to my StreamYard account. And I think I figured out why. Currently, I am the only uh, administrator of that page. We, we had, before we had several people who were um, Hi, Carla. Good to see you. Um, we had several people who were uh, oh, administrators and I don't know if they called them managers or editors or whatever um, on that page. And they've all gone different ways. So I'm the only one left on it right now. I think that's the problem. I think I need a second person on that page. And that will resolve that issue, I hope. Well, you know. <laughs> knocking stuff over this morning. How is everybody? It's Tuesday, February the 7th. And, and as far as the podcast, not so much the uh, videos through YouTube, but as far as the podcast, this is podcast number 35 over at Fountain. Remember, I prefer Fountain, the Fountain Network. It's part of the Value for Value Network setup. Um, so today, what we're going to kind of, it's a little more scripted on Tuesdays. Fridays is usually an unscripted, but uh, today I want to talk about updating my uh, notary signing agent uh, credentials, which you wouldn't think. A lot of people don't know what that is anyway, but uh, my goal of being a Satoshi millionaire, uh, Bitcoin wallets, and a few other things. So uh, if you are on if you find me on Fountain and you hear anything that's of benefit to you, whether and you feel that it has some value, I hope you'll share some value back. Um, some people call it tipping. I don't like to call it tipping, but uh, if you feel that you've if you've gained some value, I hope you'll share that uh, with us. And uh, I tend and I share that in return to other people. Uh, now, this morning, I, you know, yesterday I worked on uh, uh, 
I'm already out of order, y'all. Sorry. But anyway, yesterday I worked on updating some of my credentials uh, for my notary signing agent certification. So a notary signing agent is a, a notary who has completed uh, background screening, um, posted an ENO uh, insurance or carries a certain amount of ENO insurance. You, sometimes some states require a bond to be posted. West Virginia doesn't require one. Some of the signing agencies have in the past required them. Um, you have to have some training. Uh, generally, National Notary Association is the uh, is the one that uh, the uh, organization, the industry looks to as the standard. There are some other companies, up and coming companies, who offer additional trainings and things like reverse mortgages and things. And I have completed those in the past. And what we do is, uh, let's say you're doing a refinance a refinance mortgage um, and you can't be where let's say it, the paperwork's going through you're scheduled to be in West Virginia but your property's in Florida that's one of the more popular ones that I do or have done um, so you're notifying your your bank or your lending institution hey I'm gonna be in Florida about the, or I'm gonna be in West Virginia about the time these these papers get finished that's okay we got notaries up there that can handle that so I'm on a list with a lot of the lenders uh, and finance companies to be responsible and have been checked to take custody of the documents, bring them to you, walk you through them, uh, notarize things that need to be notarized, collect the documents, come back, and um, and see that they are shipped out properly. And um, it it's kind of involved. I mean, you do have to... It's a little bit of an investment you get you need to have a laser printer because the documents cannot be inkjet printed because a little bit of water will ruin it uh, plus they get filed with uh, government bodies so it has to be permanent and, and uh, laser is permanent you need a, uh, a cell phone you need your credentialing and your and stuff so you you get into it you can get second um, pre-owned equipment you know, but you're looking at probably a couple grand by the time you put in your training or for me, recertification, your insurance, your bonding, your background check, um, and all of that kind of stuff, uh, your ENO, it's going to be a couple grand. So every, I don't have to renew all of those every time, like the ENO, I can get the ENO coverage for six years running. So I don't necessarily have to renew it every year, but um, it can be kind of high. It can be rewarding. It can be exhausting because you're dealing with people and their money. And sometimes those people, <laughs> I had one couple in Beckley and I apologize. My headphones are sliding all over because I got my hair knotted up on top of my head in the wrong place. Um, I had a couple in Beckley that were doing a, a refinance and, um, not only did they want to read every document and see when I get there, I'm assuming you've read everything. Your your uh, finance company should have provided you uh, drafts of everything for you to read so that you know what you're getting into, you know. But when I get there, a lot of times people haven't done that. They'll call somebody on the, you know, that they see online or in a commercial and they'll give them information over the phone, but they haven't actually seen or laid hands on the document. So. It, they're really nice people. I'm not. I'm not, you know, casting shade or anything on them about this. This is a, this is not typical, but it is kind of frequent. I get there. These refinance documents are a couple hundred pages a piece. They want to read every page. He wants to read it. She wants to read it. And they've brought a neighbor who's an attorney. They say to read it. It's not up to me to tell them who they can and can't have in that room. It's none of my business. I, it was three hours just sitting with them going through the documents. And these things should take maybe half hour, 45 minutes. Because I've already gone through and I've already flagged where the signatures need to happen. And remember, these folks are supposed to already have the documents and look through them. <laughs> so all they're doing is the formal act of signing it. It's crazy. But it can be lucrative, and I I have a ball uh, driving through the commute the the state 
Uh, I have learned the limits. I was asked to go down to McDowell on Friday and I sent back, look, it's going to take me an hour and 15 minutes to get to that particular house. It's going to take me an hour and 15 minutes to get back. That's three hours on the road as long as there's no traffic issues. Three hours of my day. Then I'm going to be sitting with him going through the documents. Probably at least another hour. So that's four hours of my day. Plus printing, which is 10 or 15 minutes, depending on if I'm if I'm downstairs in the bunker or if I'm over at the office. The machine over at the office is a little faster, but I don't get over there every day. I'm spoiled, especially through the winter. I'm spoiled to stay at the house. But, you know, so I'm going through all that, It you know, four and a half, five hours of my day just for this one appointment. Here's my rate. I knew they weren't going to take it, but it was a realistic rate. I, I, have, I have calculated the hourly rate I need, not just to break even, because, you know, I'm not trying to break even. I'm trying to profit. So the break even point plus some profit and I know what my hourly rate is and it's not ten dollars an hour trust me plus the certification plus the insurance plus all that other stuff has to be calculated in all of this so I know what my hourly rate is and of course they weren't going to pay that but that's why I said look you know here's here's how much time I've got invested as long as nothing goes wrong and if they cancel that day, I can't take any new clients. I can't take anything new because my whole day is spent getting down there, dealing with them, coming back. So, no, they haven't. They, In theory, they could because it's not Friday yet. In theory, they could reach me by tomorrow and I would set the appointment up with the client and go down there. Not likely to happen. Not likely to happen. But uh, because the signing companies don't charge enough on their end. And they are stingy with, and I say stingy, I don't mean it mean, but if you are um, an, a go-between person, so the, the finance company or the title companies are calling you to find people and I'm contracted with you and you are charging, just let's just say for round numbers, 200 bucks. Okay, I want $200. You think you're going to pay your person 100 and you're only going to pay me 100 and that's not going to happen. Because all of the exertion, all of the work is on my end. You're rounding people up. I'm doing all the work. So you're, I'm not, you're not gonna, you're not gonna take me. Some companies are great to work for. Some of them don't bat an eye. Some of them are really, really stingy. So I did a lot of that yesterday. I had, you know, there's, there's, um, Oh, continuing education you have to do, and it just is a nightmare. The video is one that I've been watching for five years. It hasn't changed. Same old, same old, but because it's on the computer, you have to click next, and it knows that it's tagging you. It knows when you're not finishing something, and then there's always the open book test at the end, and choose the best answer of, and you always get a couple that's not exactly right, but it is the best of the four. So it took a lot of time yesterday. Um, I'm considering taking you, have you, if you've never heard, you know, there are some notarizing that's happening online and it really took off in during the, um, during the lockdowns uh, when people still needed banking services and still needed documents taken care of. And uh, it kind of grew from there up until that point. A lot of the leaders in the industry were saying, you know, online notarization is not going to be happy. It's not going to be a thing. It kind of is, um, but honestly, I only had two calls last year about doing it, and that's not enough. I, I don't. There's some investment that you have to do in software and stuff that I don't know if I there's enough demand for it here in West Virginia for me to get into it. But it's something I'm considering. Things that I can do from here so that I continue to run the uh, the uh, the B&B &B and um, take care of the chickens and the ducks and the cats and the dogs and stuff. So like, I, I really like being here and what I can do to bring in a little extra cash to help cover some of the costs associated with inflation is always a good thing. And I've had my company Robin's desktop running since 2005. 
So it's been around for a while. Okay, let's see. Um, tax season is here. Uh, I'm not real good with it anymore. I used to be pretty good at not doing my taxes. I, I never did my own taxes. But um, used to be real good about keeping all the receipts and everything that we needed together. And honestly, since we moved over here, it's just been a nightmare. And I don't know if it's just because the move to this house, and it's been several years ago, if the move to this house just disrupted things to the point where it's so overwhelming, it was easier to start over here and do something different. <laughs> Or if I'm just, you know, I've got so much stuff to get rid of and I'm always afraid to get rid of it. Always afraid that it'll be audited and I won't have what I need. And I've actually got documents from my first husband's taxes. That was a long time ago. I could probably get rid of those, but I got to get rid of them the right way. Either got to go to a shredding event, you know, some of these companies that have, uh, and even some of your local governments will have shredding events where you can bring your sensitive documents in and uh, get them shredded. Um, I either need to do that or I need to invest in a uh, more substantial shredder of my own. I have a little one, but sometimes let's say, let's go back to the notary signing agent stuff just for a minute. Some of those documents are the whole package is a couple hundred pages. I could have that together and the appointment fall through or some of these things uh, you may have a hundred pages worth of stuff and and all I have to do is scan and upload it and then shred the originals after they've received them checked them and told me go ahead and, and shred them so my shredders not it's kind of wimpy for the stuff I really need to do um, but probably in the short run finding a shredding event would be the best way uh, because I could just gather everything up in a box, take it over, pay. I don't know what they, I think they charge by the pound um, to shred stuff. I think, I think it's so much per pound. Um, and get it done all at one big batch and then have it cleared out. I could do that. I could probably do that. But yeah, I'm, I'm really, I've got to sit down and um, I've got to get uh, sort through our um, utilities because working from home, there's a percentage that you can take off of your taxes of your utilities and stuff associated. And they do the math. The CPA does the math on the square footage of the house and how much you dedicate to um, your office and you they calculate the percentage. But I need all the utilities stuff together. And I usually add them all up in a spreadsheet, clip them together. You know, um, the CPA doesn't need to see all of the utility statements. She just needs a list. So I, I have a spreadsheet that I just, I mean, it's just a really basic spreadsheet that I just plug the numbers in. I've already got the calculations set. So it self-calculates. And um, I need the backup documents in case I'm audited. So I've got all that stuff. And then, you know, just the other stuff with his W-2 job. Um, I haven't, you know, I know there used to be a percentage that you could take off for uh, medical costs. And we may have hit that last year um, because of his shoulder surgery and my back um, treatment. I'll have to find out about that. I do need to do a couple more videos. Um and I need to take some of the ones I've got and make some short, uh, short form content, uh, trim them down and get them, you know, really short a minute or less. I have a hard time doing that because I just, you know, I need all this information. But when you do the short content stuff, you just need, you just put the bare minimum in there. And I'm not sure, I'm not sure how, to, <laughs> what the bare minimum would be. Oh, do 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 do. I well, I know time wise what it would be. Uh, because you want to get it'd be like making a commercial, and I I was never into making commercials. So you got a thirty second and a sixty second video, short forms. I've got a little one made for like an introduction that I can do. It's some of these others, like if I do. 
a short video on um, how you how you can bring back hardened uh, brown sugar. I mean, a lot of us think, ah, it's no big deal. But there's a lot of people out there who don't understand how to do that. So I could I could do that. Um, but then I have to, <laughs> I explain it and then I over explain it. And then I have to try to cut it and I, I could script it. But then I got to try to read it or try to memorize it. And <sighs> you're here on this li live and you see how sad it is. <laughs> so <laughs> the videos aren't much better. All right, let's see. Uh, still working on the audiobook for, oh, this is the goals. My goals. Audiobook for the ham general license. Uh, Doghouse roof is still kind of delayed because we still got to do work on the front porch. I haven't picked out the, um, the posts and stuff. The contractor said he could do that for me. He'd come over and measure it. It's been a couple of weeks. I either need to goose him a little bit and get him over here because he is busy building a house for, you know, not his own house, but building a house. Or resign myself to doing it, and I, why I'm afraid to do it because it. I don't want to mess up the porch. I want the porch to look nice, and uh, I know what kind of work I do when I try, and it's not usually very good. <laughs> so, I'll be working on marketing a little more today. Uh, get, and that that comes back that ties in with that short form video, short length video. Uh, to market, to get shorter clips up and out there and around um, to get more folks to come and, and stay with us. <laughs> uh, moving my stuff off the cloud. I have made a little progress there. I've got an, uh, an S a USB tower for, you know, um, USB drives and, and I've got a um, micro SD, uh, box coming well it's a sd and micro sd so um i don't think i have a micro one here i don't i just have an sd card um the micro one's in the camera so it's just a little case that's got sponge and you can put your micro sds and stuff in there and the idea is to download um, the majority if not all i won't download everything off of the big g because it's easy to get to and it's no charge but i'll take take photos and stuff off there that i mean i've got pictures on there from oh my gosh 2004 2005 whenever i was first invited to, to be to have a google account gmail account i don't remember when that was back when you could only get invite so many people at a time but um so I want to bring all that stuff off the cloud, out of uh, out of OneDrive, out of I. I used to have a um, oh shoot, a Dropbox account. I kind of let it go. I guess the stuff's still out there. I don't know. I have to reach out to them and find out. I there's still some files on a couple of laptops, and I need to get those cleaned up. I just want to get everything off the cloud. That way, you know, when the next Chinese balloon goes over, and Drops at EMP and all the Google servers and all the Microsoft servers and everything gets gets toasted and you can't get to anything, then I'll have my stuff or the important stuff. So, oh, let's see. Background screen is underway. I got to renew the ENO, update the uh, notary signing agent page. Kind of already talked about that. I feel like I'm boring you people to death. Nobody's saying anything. Y'all need to say something. So I I hinted at um, I hinted at the Bitcoin, and I hinted at the Satoshi stuff. Now, it, some of you guys understand. Some of you don't, but some of you understand that capital B Bitcoin. People use the phrase bit, Bitcoin kind of like we use the phrase bandage um, or Band-Aid for a bandage. Band-Aid being a brand name. Bitcoin with a capital B is a brand, um, is an actual brand of crypto. It was the original or one of the originals. 
been around for, I don't know, was it 13 years or more, something like that. So Bitcoin is broken down, not exactly the same, but you, you could say a uh, $100 bill is like a Bitcoin and the Satoshis are the pennies or the cents, one cent coins. Because remember, folks in the United States, we forget, we, we say penny, but it's actually a one cent coin. So there's your little trivia for today. Um, so it's just, it's, it's just a little goal. It's not a whole lot. I don't envision being a uh, whole Bitcoin holder. It would be nice. And maybe that's a long range thing. Um, but I, right now, I just want, I've got a little target of, of having a million Satoshis, which would be, like I said, our one cent, except it's smaller than, you know, because the dollar is based on tens and this is even smaller. This goes further over past the decimal point. But um, in order to be, you know, it, it's going to be around, um, 250 us dollars to be it's probably a little more than that because when i checked this morning um bitcoin was it was it 23 i think it was 23 i've got it written down somewhere but um it was around 23 i think thousand for for one so that number has changed a little bit but right now um i want by my birthday my birthday's on the 21st right it's actually mardi gras Fat Tuesday. <laughs> Hello. So I, 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 will, I want to get a million Satoshi by the end of the day on my birthday. And right now, I'm a tenth of the way there. <laughs> um, or maybe, a, well, no, wait, that's a quarter. I've got, I'm a quarter of the way there. I've got 127,149 Satoshi across three different apps. Now, they're not all in the same place, which is part of the next steps that I've got to work on. But I have I have cobbled together 127,149 Satoshis. Now, that doesn't mean anything. It's, I mean, it's like 10 or 15 bucks. It's not a whole lot, really, if you if you were just to cash it out. But uh, so I, that's like a, a quarter of the way there. So um, I'm anxious, you know, to get that to get to reach that milestone. Uh, part of it I'm doing with the fold card which is a, a debit a prepaid debit card or prepaid credit i don't know which way it goes debit or credit but anyway you have to load it up you load it up and then you then you use this prepaid and so instead of like points towards whatever because like my paypal debit card gives me money back you know it's like out of 30 bucks i get three dollars so um this is kind of the same but you get satoshis and um, so I've got enough now. Oh, hey, Jackie. I just, look, I was, I, I was looking at numbers there just for a minute. I didn't see you pop in there. And Carla, there's a valid reason I'm not a notary or renting out rooms or creating content, leaving these things to the more, oh, it doesn't take a lot. I am so lost. I should probably try to learn about digital current leads. Um, I've got, um, I've got one link I can put in there now. Uh, Give me just a second to scroll down to it. There's another one that I got to get. Uh, there's a, um, it, this one is going to be 21 days to Bitcoin. Where is it? It's always in the 21 days of Bitcoin. And what you do when you sign up with it, you um, obviously give them the email. Um and every day you get another email back, you get an email that you read through. It's not just a few paragraphs. It's not a whole lot that kind of explains the history. And there's some of it that I can't, I can't wrap my brain around. And that's into the coding and um, into the validation is what they call mining and, and the validation of the transactions of Bitcoin. So uh, there's always uh, somebody, but it's, that fast there's always somebody running a computer that's validating so there's only x amount of bitcoin uh, that's available for the world and there's no way to create more because in the programming 
it, it's kind of hard for me to explain because I'm not that skilled in it. In the in the programming and the creation, there are catches. There are um, oh snares, I guess if you want to call it, that prevents p even the coders and the miners to um, from creating new Bitcoin. So unlike the U.S. dollar, which all they got to do is type up and and hit enter and create more money leading to inflation because they're flooding the market with dollars. Um, this is actually limited and it's, it's, you could say gold and silver, but we can, we can find more gold and silver. There's not a whole lot out there. We don't think, but so it is limited, but um, it's right now I'm not, I'm not using enough to, to, I'm not risking the house. I'm not risking the car. I'm not risking anything. The total amount that I've got, like I said, is, you know, 10 or 20 bucks. So I've got just enough to play with and learn. But one of the things, you know, they, um, the guy that did, uh, did, is in trouble uh, and, and caused the, uh, the one uh, exchange to collapse because he was a thief. Okay. That's, and what happened was um, it was a Ponzi scheme. And he he convinced all these multimillionaires, and of course his parents were bankers, and may still be. I'm, I'm not sure, but anyway. So he had you know he had familiarity with with this this scam he was he was trying to pull. He had an idea of how he could do that. But what happened was, um, it wasn't just people saying, "Here's a stack of money, invest." When it came to this. They get they they gave him the password to their savings account. Now that's not literal; that's that's figurative. So what happens is you you get Bitcoin and it sets um, on a card somewhere. Let's say uh, let's say uh, like my fold card. It's just like a Visa card. It's just like it's tied to a a computer somewhere that keeps track of how much values on it. So let's say you Carla let's say you had um Satoshi's on your fold card Carla's fold card and I said I can I can increase your wealth I can I can get you more money you'll you'll be rolling in the dough I just need to access your fold account and let's say what you would have done is you loaded it up with money then you gave me not only the card number but the pin number and everything I needed to suck all that money out Okay, and that's what happened with that exchange. What you want to do is you want to, you don't want to keep all of your Satoshi or money, you know, on that one card and then give it to somebody. You pull it off and you pull it off into a wallet and that's just, that's kind of like a, like a USB only it's highly secured. Um, you you load this with your electronics money, your Bitcoin or whatever you choose. I mean, I'm talking about Bitcoin. You put all of it on here. You might leave a little bit of it out there on that card, on that prepaid card to spend, but nobody can get to it. If this is sitting in a safe, a fireproof safe, your computer can be hacked and nobody can get to this. So what you do is just like file documents. Just like your photos, okay? You take them off the cloud, you put them on the drive. And as long as your drive's not hooked to your computer, nobody can get to it. Then when you do hook it to your computer, you have 12 words, random words, that only you know. And if you lose them, there are ways, but it's really hard <laughs> to get back. Unless you give your 12 words to somebody. You plug it back in, you key in your 12 words, you pull out what you want, you deposit back what you want. You take this out. Nobody has access to this. Then nobody can take your stuff. So if, let's say, if, um, let's say I get my million Satoshis. And let's say I take them off the internets, off all the little cards, off all the little places and apps and stuff. And I put them in my secure wallet. This would be called a wallet. Uh, and I put this in a fireproof safe somewhere. And I don't think about it again for five years. And I think, oh, where'd that card go? And let's say at that point, um, 
Bitcoin's worth a hundred thousand dollars. Everything I've got on here is now worth that much more. Just like gold, just like the price of gold goes up and down, if it's sitting in your sitting in your safe in the house, the value of it goes up and down. So it's what the thing I think that a lot of people have trouble wrapping around is that it's it's computer money. But you know, 125 years ago, the idea of writing a check or using a computer to move money from accounts was foreign to a lot of people until they got used, you know, until we evolved in our, in our ability to think. So it can be done for some of us, it's harder than others. I have to admit, you know, the, the, the brainy people who do a lot of uh, techie, geeky kind of stuff get it a lot easier but it's 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 hard but it's not that hard you can drive a car you don't have to rebuild the engine right kind of the same idea we can use the bitcoin and we can learn to understand it we don't have to learn what's going on in the background we don't we don't have to learn the blockchain we don't have to learn all that stuff but we do have to remember not to give anybody the keys password to our online wallet offline wallet there's there's wallets you would keep online like the fold card um it's a card obviously but it it's um it's an online wallet just like you would have an online banking account and 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 that's kind of another exa- analogy that the, it, bitcoin and online banking we're just used to thinking dollars quarters, nickels, dimes, you know, um, and Bitcoin's a little bit different. But I mean, read through that, sign up for it. It's not like a scam. They don't blast you with stuff. Um, It's not, that's not a referral link. I'm not getting any kind of referral money from it. Um, A fella over on Fountain App gave me that link, uh, HJ, and, um, and I signed up for it and, and it's helped. It really has. And you, you can always go back and read it again. But, um, you're you're not stupid, Carla. You're just busy. You're just busy. Let's see. Oh, so by my birthday, for those of you who play around or are very serious about uh, bitcoins and satoshis, oh, give a girl a favor. I'm gonna be fifty-eight. I'm gonna be fifty-eight. Send me some bitcoin. I need to. <laughs> um. What's is is girls go around, or and I shouldn't say it that way, but the girls go around with a cash app number on the back of their car. Cash app me, <laughs> send me some money. <laughs> but no, I want to earn it. I want to earn it. I want to be able to earn it. Uh, either you know, either somebody coming to stay here and paying with you know with Satoshi, and we can work that out. That's fine uh, here at the BNB, or you know, through content or through. Um, the cookbooks or or anything like that. I I want to earn it. I want to earn it. I don't have all the things in place to do that yet, but I want to earn it. I don't. I don't want to put foot pictures up there for people. <laughs> on that on that internet page that those people do put put pictures and get paid for it. Sorry. <laughs> I really had a panic call from one of my ladies who thinks someone hacked into her bank account. She's at the bank right now trying to straighten it out. Somehow Amazon's involved and she doesn't have an account. Um, well, the, it's of the digital stuff, it can be frightening. But, I mean, if you're using a bank card, I, I got, we had our card skimmed. And we're 90% sure of where. We're 90% sure it was the gas station there at Quincy. Um, it's been several years ago. I mean, probably eight years ago or more. And I started getting notices because I have my bank account set to notify me if it gets below a certain amount. And it was getting below a certain amount all the time. I was just getting bing, bing, bing. You know, and so I I checked online the account and there was all these charges in Beckley and we hadn't left the house. So I got a hold of the credit union and said, there's something going on. Can you stop, you know, anything from going through? 
And so I went up to the credit union, had to fill out paperwork, had to go to the police, file a report, and the credit union put back all the money that had been taken. But, you know, we tried to re reach the um, the Lowe's store in Beckley and ask them, and they're like, there hadn't been anybody here. You know, they were like, I don't know. So I don't, I don't know if anybody was ever caught and done anything about it or not. But, I mean, if you're, I mean, you can get hacked. Your accounts can get hacked just by being online now and, and somebody getting in if you don't have a secure network and they can get in. And if you keep all your stuff on your computer, I mean, it's it's really no different. I mean, it's a little more complicated in how how Bitcoin is um, circulated. But I mean, it's really it's not a whole lot of difference. Hashtag cash app robin on a bumper sticker <laughs> no <laughs> no 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 oh uh, we won't be doing that <laughs> but it is kind of funny it is kind of funny <laughs> bitcoin me <laughs> mm. sorry my throat's getting dry uh so i am gonna i'm trying to move my stuff off the cloud i told you that those things are on order and coming in the USB tower and micro SD and micro SD holder so that I can move all that stuff off there. Um, the not so sexy, not so going to cash at people. Um, I've pretty much decided. I know you guys have been waiting, just waiting to know. Pretty well decided that Bob is also allergic to eating chicken poop. I said it. I said it. You know, we've been fighting because the, the vet said that he has an allergy to poultry. And we've tried to cut poultry out of everything. Can't cut it out of the canned cat food right now that, that I can figure out. There are some, but they're those little teeny tiny cans. And it would cost me a, a million dollars just to, to buy a week's worth of those dumb little cans. But uh, we've been able to keep the dogs out of the canned cat food. But the dry cat food I can get. It's still expensive, but they're more apt to get a hold of the dry food from the cats knocking it over and, you know, dropping a piece here and there. So we've gone to poultry-free cat food. Of course, the dogs get poultry-free dog food. Um, but I did, I let the chickens out here about a week and a half ago into the whole yard. I've been keeping them pinned off to the back half of the yard. And um, I let them run loose because, I mean, they hadn't been out through there and they get under the camper and dust bath and stuff and because it stays dry under there but um, shortly after I did that he started scratching again now either somebody went by and um, fed him a, a something that had poultry in it not knowing because there's a couple people who who walk and and are nice and they they want to be nice to the, the pets so they carry treats in their pockets and most of those treats and I've read them most of the ones that you buy if you read the label they've got some kind of poultry in them and so that'll cause it uh but um he he started he started scratching again it's just as soon as right after I let those birds loose so I don't know the biology of bird poop but chicken poop must have the same uh, same type of protein in it as <laughs> chicken chicken feed has in it uh i got three identical charge ba charges back to back from three different locations all three said paypal was not paypal they used a debit card it was definitely not paypal but they had the right phone number for hey i had to i had a uh and you know i've got this weird thing that old people do waking up in the middle of the night can't go back to sleep and i don't know what caused me that particular evening i woke up and i saw that um my amazon shipment had had was on the way i thought why well, have or not amazon my walmart was on the way and i'm thinking i haven't ordered anything from walmart for delivery and my walmart account somehow had been um compromised and there was a shipment of stuff, a couple hundred dollars worth of stuff, going to Texas. I don't have anybody in Texas anymore. You know, Douglas lives in Virginia. I don't live in Texas. I don't have any family in Texas that I'm aware of. And uh, so I called, uh, I got a hold of Walmart. I think I did it on the app, an online chat or something. I can't remember now. And I said, I didn't order anything. 
you got to stop that. Well, we can't stop. It's already been shipped. Well, how do I stop it? Well, you have to call a shipping company. Who's the shipping company? I think it was FedEx. So I got a hold of their bot, got a hold of a human on the end of the bot, and they said, um, so you want to cancel delivery? I said, yeah, because it's not me, and I didn't order it. Somebody's hacked my card. And so they stopped delivery and sent it back. And then I went in and changed my password on my Walmart account. Uh, could Bob be allergic to feathers? He, I mean, he, he could be, but it doesn't seem, he's not eating feathers that I know of. Um, I mean, I'm, I've never seen him eat feathers. So I don't know, but it's, I I would suspect that it, I mean, there would, it would be in the, it's probably some DNA protein that. So, oh, don't forget, February is, this is a shameless plug here. February is my birthday month and direct book guests, for those of you who are out there, Direct book guests get a little something extra. If you use the promo code BD10, and that's like birthday, BD10, uh, direct book guests can get an additional 10% off the regular room rate. Um, and, you know, that's in addition to an opportunity for the Hall's Chocolates and Coal River Coffee um, and just other things. If you order, if you book soon enough and let me know, there's a couple of specialties that breakfast things and I keep meaning to make those and video those and show what they are a couple of things that I do uh, specifically that are uh, it's like corn mush and, ma and maple syrup and then a uh, blueberry breakfast uh, porridge kind of thing and um, uh, just a couple of them. I haven't done them for a while but you have to you have to book in advance enough that I can make sure that I've got everything I need to do that because I don't do that for everybody that would be a direct book guests thing um, Airbnb people wouldn't get it because Airbnb expects to get part of the money when I do that. So you can go to, if you want a direct book, or if you just want to check check it out, go to robinholstein.com, R-O-B-I-N-H-O-L-S-T-E-I-N.com, and uh, look for Holstein House in the menu and just, you know, read through and see what all's going on. I was uh, live streaming Rumble and it kind of quit on me here. Not sure what's going on there. Whoops. There we go. I don't know. I don't know what happened. We'll see. All righty. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure it's something he's eating. Bob, something it's it's something he's eating. Because if he's in any other I mean, it's just not there's there's no other explanation for it. He's not out into anything other than the yard. There's not anything going on in the yard. There's no uh spilled gasoline there's no oil there's no uh camper juices dripping anywhere i mean and there's there's no lawn work going on so um yeah it's something and the vet's pretty sure that it's he's got all the symptoms of um, a dog with poultry allergies when he gets it um i think i've told you guys here goes this dumb headset again i gotta next time i gotta make sure i do my hair in a different spot um i told you i think I think I told you, you may not have been paying attention, Stan Bumgardner, Stan Bumgardner, local fiddle legend and West Virginia historian, is going to be one of my, my interviews here in a couple weeks. Um, I've known Stan for over 20 years. I don't know him, except I'm not a close personal friend, but we do know each other. I met him when uh, I started dating uh, Wayne back when they were playing in the in the uh, Southern Rock Band Rockin' Horse. Stan uh, used to work for the Division of Culture and History, and from 2015 to just last December, he was the editor of Golden Seal, Golden Seal Magazine, and now he's with West Virginia Human Humanities Council. Um, hes I think he's the best, but he may, if he's not the best, he's one of the best fiddle players in West Virginia. We're going to be recording that interview on the 22nd. It won't be live, but I will be uploading it afterwards. So I'm really excited. Uh, I'm going to talk to him a little bit about music. And I've warned him that I, I like to fall into topics of politics, but I'm going to not, not do that with him because that's that's not the point to talk with him. Um, now, I did mention a little while ago um, that about, you know, we, we were talking about the Bitcoin. I, I need a wallet. And there's been a, cu uh, a couple of suggestions on the wallet. Um on, on the Fountain app, fountain.fm, for the podcast, there's a, a fellow that has 
been following me and and contributing and actually shared the link that I just put in the uh, in the chat box there um, for the 21 days of Bitcoin to help get me up to speed on it. And he goes by HJ and I'll leave it at that. But he um, he has suggested uh, because I, I had been talking about wanting to be a Satoshi millionaire. I mean, it just sounds like it's a lot. It's really not a lot. I mean, it really is <laughs> as far as cash, but um, it just sounds it just sounds so fun. Uh, but it, I have to have a wallet. I have to have a wallet to keep it, to get it off the uh, off the Internet, out of the hands of people who might steal it. And um, oh, yeah, um, today when I check, here's my note on that I was trying to find earlier when I checked just before I came on live, it was at Bitcoin with a capital B was at twenty three thousand dollars U.S. if you were to take U.S. cash and buy one. <clears throat> so that was and it fluctuates throughout the day. You'd, you'd lose your mind trying to trying to chase it. So I don't try to chase it. I check it every couple of days or so. But it's been kind of going up again. It had dropped quite a bit. I still don't have twenty three thousand dollars just to check right at it. But, you know that's where it's at but uh, and and I have 127,149 Satoshi so far uh, using the fold app and uh, uh, fountain.fm and the fold's got a little a wheel you can spin and there's a um, Bitcoin magazine that if you read certain articles you can get like five, five Satoshis each for reading the articles and just stuff like that so it, it's kind of fun uh, but I do need a wallet and H.J. recommended I look at the, I don't know how you pronounce it, Moon, M-U-U-N, wallet for online. And then Trezor wallet for uh, cold storage. I think that's what they call it, but it's offline storage. Um, the Trezor I've heard of, and you can get those on Amazon. So I'm going to look at that. There is a, uh, a, uh, a um, YouTuber that I follow. Uh, it's called The Lots Project, L-O-T-S Project. And the guy that runs that, his name's Brian, and he's got a ebook on crypto. I don't have it yet. I don't have that ebook yet. I'm going to be getting it. and I'm going to be reading it too, uh, just to uh, to have another source to look at and see. He he do, he works with folks a little bit who are new to crypto and Bitcoin, and um, I you know I I know enough to be get myself in trouble. So I uh, I'm gonna chat with him about it a little bit so we're getting close we're getting close what 50 still well, it says 57 minutes but I actually started it a little early as far as went live but I wasn't on it yet um, Bible study at my church this week uh, for those of you who have or have not been paying attention we've been doing a study on friendship biblical friendship and this week is going to be week five out of six on this topic. We'll be discussing how to rebuild broken trust, and um, this is the this is the thing that I was trying to stream um, through Streamyard to our church page. Now I could stream it to my page with no trouble, but the church page I'm having trouble with it, and I don't know why. But uh, I think it's because I need a second person on the account. Maybe. I might stick Jesse on there or something. Jesse, if you're listening, I may stick you on the church account. But um, so that uh, so that I can stream that. But what I really am more excited about, and of course, I'm, I'm excited about this too, our Bibles and Brunch series, Wednesdays at 10. For those of you guys who are out there, would like to come. It's in the Fellowship Hall at Diamond United Methodist Church. We're going to start a series on Easter. It's going to be uh, six weeks. It's going to end on the Wednesday before Easter. And the first one is going to be the history of Easter or Resurrection Sunday. Uh, I kind of like Resurrection Sunday better, but we're all in the habit of saying Easter and sometimes it's hard to break those habits. And so that one's going to be like an hour long video. And then we're going to have a series of, um, uh, we're going to have a, a two video series. Then we're going to have a three video series and then... Um, I guess it's going to be seven. I'd have to look at the calendar. But anyway, so the East, the Wednesday before Easter, we're going to view uh, the Passion of the Christ, the one that Mel Gibson directed. And it's going to be difficult to watch because it is a very graphic movie. 
very graphic. Children are not going to be admitted. And adults are encouraged to think carefully. It is a very tough movie to watch. It is probably the most realistic depiction of the crucifixion and the things that led up to the crucifixion that I've ever seen in my life. And uh, But we're going to do that free of charge, no charge. Uh, we don't charge for any of the stuff at the church for the uh, breakfast and br uh, Bibles and brunch. We do have a donation jar out for anybody who wants to contribute, and that's fine. We're not asking for a dime. Just come and and uh, and spend some time with us and uh, and study. So uh, I I don't know if I don't think I can um, stream that. That's probably going to be like a copyright infringement kind of thing if I tried to stream it. So that's one that's going to have to be in person. You're going to have to be there. So that'll be the Wednesday before Easter. And uh, but leading up to it, there's going to be a series of um, of Easter themed Bibles and brunch. So, well, I think I hit all of the main uh, topics I wanted to hit today. I'm going to try to flip through my notes here real quick and make sure I did. I'm just, oh, I know one thing I wanted to ask. I wanted to ask because I'm going to do a series on um, uh, starting starting your own bed and breakfast. So what I want to do is I wanted to find out from anyone who hears or sees this and you can you can put it in the comments. Um, have you ever stayed at an Airbnb? It could be an Airbnb in someone's home like I do, or it can be like a, a totally separate vacation building, you know, cottage, camper, whatever. Have you ever stayed at one once or more than once? And, and you know, what are your thoughts on that? And would you ever consider being an Airbnb host or a small bed and breakfast host? Because like if you you could do it, if you had two or three extra rooms, you could do just a traditional bed and breakfast. Um, I've been, I've been hosting for my house since 2017, and I'd like to share my experiences with folks, and I'd like to hear your experiences and your questions. So if you, if you've ever thought about it, just thought about it and would like to just chat, there's no obligation to, you know, it's not going to be any kind of high pressure sales or anything to force you. You're not strong. You need to do this. I'm not going to do, there's a lot, there's more than enough people out there telling you that you, <laughs> that you, that you need to step up your game. I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that, but I would like to know, have you ever stayed at one? Have you ever thought about staying at one? Um, and if you thought about it, but didn't do it, why not? You know, Your, your daughters both have stayed at Airbnbs. I'd love to know what they thought about it. I know it can be scary for some people uh, and you can show up at places that are not as advertised. And I just, I'd like to hear different people's experience, personal experiences with that. So uh, that, that's pretty much, um, because I want to do, I'd like to, I'm going to do a series, I think on that. I need to, uh, again, I need to spend the time to do it. Still looking for somebody to help around the house. So if you're in my general vicinity uh, in Kanawha County, West Virginia, and uh, you know someone, now these they got to be prepared. I haven't decided that I would do it, but they have to be prepared to go through a background screening. You know, I'll 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 decide whether I need to do it or not. But they need to be ready. If they're not willing to have a background screen they don't need to let me know that they want to help clean the house because I don't need anything I've got as minor as it is stolen. So if you know anybody in the area that is, would like to um, talk to me about it, have them get a hold of me, have them get a hold of me. So that's going to wrap up a uh, hosting house podcast episode number 35. You 35. We're 15 away from 50. I got to do something for number 50. I got to do something. What can I do for number 50? That would be special. A lot of people do giveaways. I don't have anything to give away. It's a couple of keychains, maybe. That's about it. I don't do stickers or anything. 
Although maybe I should. There's a lot of people that do stickers. Free copy of the book, maybe. The ebook. Oh, I was going to share with you, too. <laughs> Look at me. I'm so out there. I don't even know what day of the week it is. Um, don't forget, I have some books on Amazon. Kindle books and print books. Uh, I have uh, Everyday Upcycle, which is my more popular book. Uh, there's 15 upcycle projects in that book that I did myself. Took my own pictures, did it all, put all that together. There's a book called uh, Nursery Rhymes My Grandma ta Told Me. And just like it sounds, it's a book of nurse old, old nursery rhymes that you don't hear anymore. Um, and I have another cookbook out there. I have It's, it's 25 favorite home cooked recipes and there's some recipes that and it it's they're way different they're way different than this one way different <coughs> excuse me and then the original the one that started it all my very first published book is called think outside the office i published it back in 2010 and that's when i started uh work and, and started my business being a virtual assistant and it's really outdated now. All, a lot of the information in there is really outdated because, you know, 2010 to 20, 13 years old. So a lot of the stuff has changed. Um, but yeah, it's out there. If you want to go to Amazon, I'm going to put a link in the show notes in, in description. Uh, but if you go to Amazon.com, just look up Robin A. Holstein. And make sure you get the A because there's Robin D. Holstein and there's Robin Holstein. There's different people out there, but this is Robin a Holstein, and it'll take you to my author's page. The cuckoo is kind of on time today. And then uh, the one that I just showed you, the super uh, the super meal ideas, is on Etsy. So if you go to Holstein House on Etsy, that's where you can get that one. But I could give it away. Uh, they both liked it. I just haven't because Mr. Hoskins generally handles all of our travel bookings eggs i don't know what you mean eggs tell me what does that eggs mean carla uh let's see i think that was it i think that was it so for the podcast itself um twice now twice hosting house podcast has been in the top 50 on the fountain fm network and i love you all for helping me achieve that it may have been the last time but it was fun just the same and i want to thank hj for 500 sats and you frosting us for a thousand sats over there on fm or fountain.fm i really appreciate your support over there um you know it's it's not it's not a top rated <laughs> podcast <laughs> But, you know, I, I can't say that I've, I've, I am much on the uh, fads and, and top ratings and stuff like that. So for the podcast, I'm going to stop there. But you guys hang out just a second, just a second. Oh, giveaway eggs. Oh, well, I can give away eggs. It'd be kind of hard to ship them. <laughs> might break some kind of law trying to ship them actually probably some strange law of agriculture that you're allowed to ship them yeah because they're and they are worth a lot of money i wonder how many eggs how many bitcoins you could get for an egg i have to ask about that <laughs> okay but i don't know there are a lot of the folks on the uh, podcasts and the um YouTube pages that I follow that when they hit certain milestones, they give stuff away. And I, I just don't know. I, I don't know what, what I, I mean, at one time I was doing a lot of soaps. Um, I still have some of those I could give away, but well, I could do that. I could do that. I think I could do some, Maybe a couple cans of Thrive Life that I've got. Because I've not been promoting Thrive Life like I should at all. I don't think I've talked about it in over a year. But I'm st I'm still a rep, a Thrive Life rep. 
Uh, people turn. I'm looking at a conversation over on Telegram. I don't know if any of you guys have ever fooled with Telegram. I, I'm looking at a lot of different places, um, a lot of different social media. There's a couple new ones. There's one called Clapper that uh, some folks are looking at that's kind of like TikTok, only without the Chinese. And uh, I haven't gone over there yet. I, I, I keyed it into the um, browser, but I, I haven't started an account over there. Um, I just, I just don't know. I've got a TikTok account, but it's got like, I don't know, six little videos just where I'm trying to figure out how to use it. I just don't like it. I really don't. I don't, I don't like the stuff that it suggests for me to follow. I mean, it's just junk. It's absolute junk. And uh, I don't like, um, um, my Rumble account, I think kicked off no it's not recording anymore i'll have to check it um i don't like uh i mean there's a lot of filth on it there really is um and um uh, i the the few accounts that i do follow that are uh, homesteads or um things like that um I just, I don't know. They, they're, it's just, I don't know. Have any, have you guys, any of you guys tried the food around and looked at, the, at TikTok at all to see what's, uh, what's going on over there? Let me close this. <laughs> I'm going to start winding down here in just a minute, but um, I'd, I'd love, and, be, and share this. Y'all do me a favor. On the Facebook, go over and like the Diamond Methodist Church, Diamond United Methodist Church page, and share it out to your friends. And just pick a few things. There's some... Um, there's some images that that I've got uh, from uh, popping up from the um, like memes from the United Methodist Church and share those around. We've got to get some attention over there. Um, I've, I need I really am struggling um, for those of you who are still listening, I'm really struggling with trying to reach the community. I'm only one person and I just don't have any help over there. And I'm really concerned that we're going to end up having to close the church. I'm, I'm trying to do stuff, but there's just not enough of me. I mean, I, I don't have any human bodies to help me do this stuff. Um, I love it mostly, but I'm, it's just exhausting. It's just exhausting for me. Um, we, I, I talked to a guy here a while back, uh, a couple weeks ago, I should say, well, I shouldn't say here a while back. That makes it sound like it was months ago, associated with the United Methodist Church here in West Virginia. And I mean, he, his, his suggestions were things that we're already trying to do. We just don't have the human, we need the bodies to be able to make everything happen. Um, in order to survey the community and see what they need out of us, we've got to be able to go door to door. I can't go to door to door. I can't do all of that. Plus get everything ready for the uh, Bibles and brunch. Plus get everything ready for uh, Sunday service. And, um, Plus, you know, everything that I, I normally do here at home and my work and everything, I, there's just not enough of me. So I need, um, I, I, I need people. And the only way I can get people is if you guys help spread the word to people who might be interested in, in coming. Now, um, we can also open up our fellowship hall 
to uh, other groups, you know, and uh, they just need to reach out to me. If you know of anybody looking for um, a place to meet in the in the diamond area, have them have them reach out to me. We can we can talk about it. Um, that was one of the things that was suggested was to to bring in some other organizations. Somebody said one said yoga. Oh, yoga's fine. It's a concrete floor. People are gonna have to bring their own mats, and I don't know anybody that teaches yoga. And it, it can't. They can't do the. It has to just be exercise. It can't be um, the Eastern religion. We can't have that. So it couldn't be any chanting or uh, incense or anything like that. So it's it's just. Um, I don't know. I just. I'm really struggling trying to keep the church open. Um, so one of the. Uh, one of the comments was, what does, what do you think your community would do if the church closed? What does that look like? I said, I don't know. I don't pretend to think for the community. Some days I think they wouldn't care one way or another. Some days I think maybe they would. But um, I'm not going to know if I can't get to the doors. And I can't get to the doors because there's not enough of me to go. So. All right, you guys. You all are bored. Nobody's talking. You're not talking, so I'm going to get ready to go. I don't see. You know, I don't even know if Twitter is. Uh, let me see if Twitter's got me. I, I don't know how it works. I'm connected to Twitter, and it's supposed to be broadcast into Twitter, but I don't, I don't know if it really is or not. Let me see. No, I don't I don't see any kind of anything that looks like this account is actually streaming to Twitter. And oh there it is. Hello Twitter. Oh, I don't want photos. Quit it. That's not That's not what I want. Go away. Stop that. This looks like there's some comments here on Twitter. And if you commented on Twitter and I haven't seen it yet, sorry. I can't um, get to it. Let me see. Oh, shoot. What did it do? Folks on Twitter, I'm not ignoring you on purpose. I don't see any, there's no comments that's come up out of Twitter on my um, stream yard. Uh, let me see what happens. I'm going to click view on Twitter and see what happens. But my little tablet over here is being a turd it's not um come on now i am looking for bear with me you guys <laughs> I see that it's live. I don't see any comments. Although on the Twitter, on my Twitter over here, it says there's three comments. Let me see if I can get to it here. <laughs> That's not a comment. <sighs> that
that's just mine. I'm sorry, you guys. Bear with me while I try to figure this out. Because it, it swears there are three comments here. Unless they're just mine. I can't see the thread. It won't show me the thread. Oh, well. I'll figure it out later. <laughs> All right, you guys. That's enough for one day. I've got to go to the store. i got to get some stuff ready for um, Bibles and Brunch tomorrow. Um, i to pick some stuff up for the house cat litter yay cat litter it's always exciting got to do some deposits and stuff so i'm going to sign off here and uh i'll be uh back on friday as far as i know friday for live unscripted if you want to come back and join me on friday so um for now i'll say goodbye guys and we will see you next time Bye bye <music>